What's going on guys, it's Stan, I'm back again to talk about some more old school Magic the Gathering killer decks. Now before I get started, I'd like to uh, give a shout out to uh, Vogrelax for getting the information on this old school deck. Appreciate that. I owe you one. Um, actually, I owe you four. Or five. I'm not exactly sure. Now the name of this deck is called the Benefactor, but a lot of you probably know it as the Trix. This deck strategy utilizes a Illusions of Grandeur and a Donate. Now this deck was first seen back in Seattle during the MTG Grand Prix. Now at this time it was in extended form. And it was first played by Darwin Castle and Rob Daughtery. But the design is generally accredited to Michelle Bush. Now to say that this deck turned a couple of heads would be an understatement. Due to this deck's huge success at helping to redefine the extended game for that season, it eventually led to the banning of the Dark Ritual and the Monovolt from extended games altogether. Now a lot of players, besides the ones that I mentioned, had their hands at tuning this deck to their liking. As a matter of fact, it can be improved to a better version than the one that I'm going to talk about in this video. And that's kind of scary considering the fact that it's already able to whoop someone's ass in about three to four turns. Now let's go ahead and talk about the functionality. Now like I said, you're going to need to get your hands on the Illusions of Grandeur and a Donate so that you can set up the combo. Now the combo involves you using the Illusions of Grandeur so that you can gain 20 life need that donate so that you can donate the illusions to your opponent. Now you still get all the benefits from the illusions. However, your opponent is the one that's going to be stuck with all of the drawbacks. Now once you get your hands on the necro, you'll be able to refill your hand whenever you need to. The tutors will help you to dig through your deck to get specific cards that you need. Um, the Ancestral Recalls will help you to get extra cards that you need as well. The Yawgmoth's Will will help you to reuse cards. And it also helps to cast a lot of spells at critical times a lot easier. The Time Walks help you to take extra turns. And the Force of Wills will help you hold off the Barbarians at the gate long enough for you to set up the combo. Which shouldn't be too long. Now once the combo is set, you can either somehow destroy the Illusions. Or you can wait for your opponent to fail at paying the upkeep. Whichever comes first. Then boom, you instantly win. Now if you think about it, this is kind of like one of the simplest combos in MTG history. Due to the fact that the combo basically uses nothing but blue. And due to the fact that you'll be playing mostly blue, you won't have to worry about being mana screwed whenever you need to play any other card. You know, like the Recall, the Force of Will, the Time Walks. Now the Black in the deck gives you access to the Necros and the Yawgmoths, the Dark Rituals, the Contagion, the Demonic Consultation, and the Duress. A lot of people also say that the true Trix combo uses a Dark Ritual and a Necro to set the stage for your opponent's demise. And if you think about it, could you blame them? A first or second turn necro to a Trix player is a dream, but now everybody else, that's a fucking nightmare. Card advantage is critical when you're engineering the deck. Being able to get the cards that you want at practically any time makes it painfully easy for you to overpower almost any opponent. Now speaking a little bit about the demonic consultation, that drawback is a bitch. Alright, I'm not going to sugarcoat it, yeah. But God forbid the bitch divorces you. Because that payoff leads to more victories than losses. Now let's go over the weaknesses. This deck does have some drawbacks, despite me telling you how simple the combo is. Tricks is tricky to play with, but if you practice you can get over that learning curve. Because the learning curve is not that steep. Also, when utilizing the Necro, only use it when you need to get cards. Uh, and another thing, if you don't act when you need to, there is a possibility that you can be snuffed out by decks that are faster than you. You know, like the beatdown decks, the player hater decks, and of course the tried but true control decks. A lot of you already out there know that control decks are pains in everyone's ass. Now let me talk a little bit about the sideboard. Now if you want to handle those heavy creature decks, whether it be Beatdown, Blitz, or Weenie Horde, the 
Contagion is a good choice. It works well with the Necro, and it is highly abusable. Now to handle another combo or control deck, get a Hydro or a Pyroblast, depending on the color. If you need some creatures on the front line because your opponent seems to always be knocking at your front door, go ahead and get the Spectre or the Negator. These creatures are actually kind of useful when you're going up against someone who's uh, playing a Brute's Force kind of strategy as well. It's always good to have an alternate path to victory, just in case one is stopped. Now let's talk a little bit about the substitutions. If you can't get your hands on the Necro, get a Yawgmoth's Bark. Can't get your hands on the Torch, get the Firestorm. Can't get your hands on the Hoodwink, get a Boomerang. If you can't get your hands on any of the Moxes, a Soul Ring, or any of the dual lands, which is understandable, go ahead and get some single lands to help fill up the gap. Or you can take it a step further and get the Academy. This will help you get double work out of the artifacts that you do have. Alright ladies and gentlemen, this was the Benefactor slash Tricks deck. Try it on your friends and tell me the results. And don't forget to comment. You know how I love to hear from you guys. Once again, thanks for watching. I'm Stan, and that's all for now.